My name is Andrew Parks, and today we're going to be doing a two-player playthrough of Quixotic Games' Core Worlds Empires, which is uh, coming to Kickstarter, or depending upon when you're watching this, it could be running on Kickstarter or after Kickstarter. We just wanted to give you a playthrough so that you could see what a multiplayer game is like. I'd love to show you what a three- or four-player game is like, but during COVID that's difficult, so today we're just going to do a two-player. So I'd like to introduce to you my opponent, Norman Hill, one of our Quixotic Games developers. Hello. And our camera person, Ada, has returned. Hello. And so she'll be asking us questions if she wants to see something a little bit closer up. So rather than teach you the rules of the game, because we know that there's other playthrough videos, we're just going to play the game and explain what we're doing while we're going so you have a sense of what the gameplay is like. So we set up the game. This is the galaxy map. And as I show you these pieces, I want to stress to you that this is a prototype. A lot of the pieces that you see here will be very different. It will be much more polished in the actual game. Um, some of the pieces are just different, like we don't have glass beads in the actual game. The graphic design is different in the final version of the game. This is just the prototype we've been using as we've been playing the game for years and playtesting it. So we've been making changes to it, but the graphic design and so on has been updated just this prototype has not yet been updated. So the first thing that Norm and I are going to do is we're going to draft worlds into our empires. In the first Core Wolves game, the story is that we're barbarians living out here in the first sector and slowly moving our way forward to conquer the galactic realm. Now we've done that and we have our own empires, but a lot of the worlds we conquered are kind of like on fire. So there's only certain worlds that are ready to join our empires at this point. So Norman and I are going to do a draft. The first time you play the game, there's actually rules where you get cards automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. But once you've been experienced, one of the differences between this and every other worker placement game that I know of is that your universe is completely different every single game. So you have to find your way, your path, through what worlds are available so that you can formulate a strategy. Therefore, you can never start playing this game and say, I know exactly what my strategy is going to be. So, with that said, we have worlds here in card form from sector 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I randomly am going first in the turn order. It's, it's very good to go first in this game, and it's also good to go last, as you'll see. So there's, there's nothing given extra to the person who goes second, because there's certain advantages to going second. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a snake draft. Um, I'm going to choose the first card here. Then Norman's going to choose one from here and here, and so on until we get through here. One of these will not be chosen in each of them. So I'm just going to start off by taking this planet, Daedalus. Norman, now you pick the other sector one. And while he's choosing, I can show you my planet. It generates tactic cards. Where are you? There you are. Where are you? Okay. Uh, there you go. I just want to get in focus. There you go. I see it. So Norman's guys. taking a Sector 1 world and a Sector 2. Um, so. And I'm paying attention to what he's taking because I can go to his worlds and he can come to mine. So we try to find some synergy amongst each other even though we're rivals. Take Poseidus, and then I pick again. All right, so now I'm going to choose another one. I'm going to take, um, take this world, Epimetheus, which lets me adjust myself on the Galactic Order chart here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Norm's going to pick Sector 3, and then he's going to pick a Sector 4. Hmm. All right, and I'm going to take Elysium. These get shuffled back into their decks, and Norm, if you want to start grabbing out our worlds, now that we have these tokens, these world tokens that reflect the worlds that we chose, we now take our faction tokens and place them in these spaces just as a reminder that these are the worlds in our own empires. Yeah, so the next thing that we're going to do as part of setup is we have these multiplier tokens. Each of us can pick 
one of our spaces in our empire and place it down. I have to place mine first. A multiplier token means that no one's been to that world in a while, so therefore that world is sort of building up resources. Instead of piling resources out onto the table, um, we instead just use these. If something has a cost, like this world right here has a cost to use, um, it's one prestige for three energy and two materials, I can use that twice, but I'd have to pay twice as well. I'd have to pay two prestige if I wanted to use it twice. Um, so with all that said and done, I'm going to place my times two onto Daedalus. And keep in mind that I have, to, I have to think about where my opponent might be going as well, because I can go to their worlds. Okay, now we've concluded setup. So we're going to start the first round. There's nine rounds in the game. So this should be actually here. And so the very first thing that we're going to do at each round is we are going to move this round marker forward just to help us uh, keep in mind um, as to which round it is. So it's the first round of the game. And the first thing we're going to do is the event phase. In the event phase, events are going to get seeded from this master event stack into the future events. And whenever a card goes into the future events, we take a card in the present events, we flip it over, and we resolve it. And then it goes face up into the past events. The reason for this is that it's possible for us during the game to actually see these events uh, before they go here and therefore try to anticipate what those events will be. It's also possible for us to actually choose which events go there so we can choose things to mess with our enemies. So, at the very beginning... Uh, the very first thing that you would normally do during the event phase is we would actually discard cards from the top of this stack equal to this number, which is 5. However, we don't do that in the first round, so we'll just proceed to the next part, which is to seed the first event. Neither Norman nor I know what this is. This is an epic one event. I put three random starting epic events here at the start of the game, so we'll just flip this one and we'll do what it says. And it's an uncharted world that says, Every empire in turn order may choose any one of the following. Three energy, two materials, or one prestige. And let's talk about what those are. If you look here, we have a resource bank that exists on our empire boards. And these empire boards are the places where we store all the information about our personal empires. On this empire board, we have these advancements where we can send our workers. The rewards for doing so are usually a lot less than going to these worlds. But it's great if there's a particular resource out in the game that's missing, and we really need to get it from our own advancements. And this is where we store our materials. So these three resource tokens mean I have three energy, two materials, and one prestige, which is what I started the game with. So now I can choose any one of these three things. So taking a look at the board, I can see prestige is going to be important. So I'm going to grab a prestige token here. And now Norman can do the same thing. He can choose any of those things. He's also taken prestige. All right. And the, next, the last thing we do as part of the event phase is we take a look at the card that's here, and it says we're, still, we're getting new worlds for Sector 1. Now, the number of worlds that come out depends upon the number of players. So this token here, which we call the Neutral Worlds token, tells us how many worlds come out. So we just kind of set this at the start of the game. We look at the number of players... It's two players, so we're always going to get just one world each turn to keep things competitive. If it had been three, then we'd get one, one turn, and then we'd flip this over and see that we'd get two the next turn. So it would alternate. But for two players, it's very simple. Every turn, we're just going to get one world. So we're going to draw the top card of the Barbaric Worlds, and this is going to come out as a neutral world. So this world is Argos 1. Nobody owns it. Uh, <laughs> where are you going? Sorry. Hold on, I'm just going to focus it. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, that's Argos 1, and it provides two materials to anyone who visits it. One of the things you may notice as we play is that the worlds out here, the barbaric worlds, always tend to give something small for free. The frontier worlds give something a little bigger, but it's going to cost you a little something. And as each level goes in deeper, you can get better rewards, but you have to pay a lot more for them. And that's kind of like the theme of these places, is that this is where the rich people are, so they're not going to give you something easily. Um, so, let's grab the Argos 1 token and put it with this card. The fact that there's a card here instead of a token 
tells us that this is a neutral world. We can both go to this world, and also we can try to annex this world into our empires. We can't annex each other's worlds unless an event says that a world is having some troubles and someone can come in and conquer it. So right now, this is the only world that either of us can annex into our empires. Why would we do that? It's worth a victory point at the end of the game. And also, it would be part of our empire. And one of the things you'll notice is that when you visit someone else's empire, they gain an empire point, and you win the game by having the most empire points. So, the event phase is over, and so now we're going to move to the ambassador phase, and we're going to move our ambassadors out one at a time. Each of our ambassadors, if you look at my empire board, each of our ambassadors has their own little hand of cards. Um, so, my leader is Lord Banner, and he started with a card, and my Zeus ambassadors started with a special card for Zeus. And they give us little special abilities that we can use for certain things. So, I'm going to start off by sending my Zeus ambassador number two over to my own place, Daedalus. Now, if nobody went to Daedalus, then this times two uh, multiplier token would actually stay. But by the fact that I'm visiting it, the times two multiplier token does not go away immediately, so Norman can still benefit from it if he gets there this round. So that means I can draw two tactic cards. Here's the tactic cards. Now, if I wanted, I could just draw these two cards and give them to one of my ambassadors. Or I can do research, which I'm going to do. Um, if I spend two materials... For every material I spend when I am drawing a card, I can draw an extra card and then put that card back on top. So therefore, the first card that I draw, I'm going to do this one at a time, I spent two materials. So even though I'm only going to draw one of these cards, I get to look at three of them and put the other two back. So this makes it so that when you're drawing a card from the top, it's not just random if you're willing to spend the, the materials on research. All right, I'm going to take a card, a tactic card. All these cards have the same back, that's why it's only white for the prototype. Um, and then I'm gonna put this with one of my uh, ambassadors, so I'm going to give it to him. Then I can put these back in the order of my choice, so I will put them on top. Um, Didn't you use the two times? Shouldn't you get two? I'm gonna get another one, but I'm just, Oh, you're, it, whichever your one first... I leave on top is going to be my second one, and I'm going to be able to draw that into my hand. So I am going to leave this card on top. That was the first time I used this world. Because of the times two, he can use it again. I know what this card is. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to give it to him. And so that is my first ambassador. So now Norman moves his first ambassador. He could come here if he wants, but because there's an ambassador here, he would lose a prestige and pay it to the bank. And I don't think I'm going to do that. I am going to go to Pata, and I'm going to pay prestige. So he's paid a prestige to gain a Starfighter and a Star Cruiser unit token. This is the first time we're seeing unit tokens be gathered. And, and he'll just stack them right underneath that guy, and he can bring them back home. If you look at unit tokens, we started with a couple of them. You don't normally need to bring unit tokens with you if you're doing something peaceful. Um, but if you're going to try to conquer a world, or annex a world, then you're going to need these tokens because a world has a minimum strength in order to be conquered or annexed. So my starting character began with an infantry. And the reason why I don't just bring them uh, with them automatically is that it costs energy to move units with a, an ambassador, where normally you don't have to. So this is, uh, this was an infantry and a starfighter that he begins with. Okay, and Norman, you... I'm going to use his special ability. He gained a unit, so I get an energy. So Norman played the card for Chancellor Augustus, which whenever he, he drafts a unit, he gains an energy, and now... Now that he's used that card, he's going to put it into his ambassador discard pile, and you can actually put that in there face down. The reason why that's important is during the end phase, we'll only get half of our cards back that we've played. Um, so we don't necessarily want our opponents to know which cards we've gotten back. So he's acquired these two unit tokens, a starfighter and a cruiser, and so that finishes that guy's turn. Um, 
I am going to send Lord Banner to the neutral world, Argos 1. And I want to bring his troops with him so that he'll have stuff to help him conquer this world. This world requires a fleet strength of one or, and a ground strength of one in order to conquer. So Lord Banner has a ground strength of one by himself. So he really only needs one other unit to come with him, but uh, Norman might also come there, and so therefore I have to be careful. We may kind of fight it out as to who gets the right to annex that world. So in order to bring these two units, I have to pay an energy because it costs one energy for every two units. So he's brought these guys over here. He has a total strength of three. Now when he arrives, he also gets to use the power on this world, Argos 1, which is to gain two materials, and so I'll do that as well and put these over here into my bank. Wait, where'd you get them from? Oh. I just took them from the oh, bank, okay. from the reserve, and put them into my resource bank. I got them because Argos 1 allows anyone who goes there to get two materials. And now Norman is up. Okay. would love to fight it out, but I think I would lose. So instead, I'm going to go to my own world. So that world lets him spend an energy and a materials to get a unit card. And unit cards allow you to upgrade these unit tokens into much more powerful versions. All right, so you paid to do it the first time? Um, I'm going, so I will pay to do it once. And once again, he could pay an extra material if he wanted to, to look at an extra card, or choose just to take the top card. But I'm not going to. Okay, so you just grab the top card, and you can give that... To anybody. To any of your ambassadors. And then since it has the times two, he could pay an energy and material again in order to gain another unit card. Which I will. Now, I have a tough decision to make because I really wanted to go there. But now, not only will I give Norman, he'll gain an empire point from the reserve just because I'm visiting his empire. Because he has an ambassador there, I have to pay a prestige to the reserve to go there. Um, so I don't want to pay that. So I'll, I'll instead, I'll still go to Norman's land over there, to his empire. But instead, I'll go to his... Uh, world of Sinbad. Now, um, you might be thinking, well, if I go to Norman's world first, he's going to be in trouble. He's going to have to pay prestige. One of the advantages of your own empire is that you don't have to pay a prestige to go there, even if someone was there. So, I'm, so if Norman wanted to send his last ambassador here, he wouldn't have to pay a prestige. Um, so Norman, I go here. I don't have to pay a prestige because there's no rival ambassadors there, uh, but you get an empire point because I'm visiting your empire. And that Sinbad allows me to move up in the Merchant Alliance, which is one of the six galactic orders. So what we'll do is we'll take a look over here onto this galactic board, which holds a lot of information. And I'm going to take my token, my faction token. That's my faction token. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to move it to the number one spot here. Now, one of the things we didn't do when setting up is there's see these little incentive tokens out here. The first person to reach a particular token gets that resource, so energy, materials, and so on. Um, and, uh, and that's never replenished. That's just an incentive to get there first. Okay. And Norman, you're up. So I'll finish this up while you're going there. And Norman has his last ambassador. I do have my last ambassador. Oh, what did I do? I moved the wrong guy there. See? Yeah, I, th I was wondering where your ambassador mistakes. went. Even designers make mistakes. Um, let's see if this works. Now, am I, uh, will, I, will I have to pay a prestige to go there? So you don't, that's a good question. You don't have to pay a prestige just to go here if you want to fight the world. But if you want to use Argos 1, because I got here first, you'll have to pay a prestige to get those two materials. Okay. So what I will do 
is I am going to go to Argos 1. I need to pay an energy for my two units. Yep. I will pay the prestige, and that will give me two materials. Okay. I'm nervous, because before he said he didn't have enough, but now he's gotten some cards, so I'm a little scared. Worth. I'm a little scared. Okay. Um, so, that's the end of the ambassador phase, and now we go um, into the annexation phase. So, interestingly here, um, or I think we've renamed that the, ex the expansion phase. Yes, the expansion phase. So we're in the expansion phase now. So normally one of us could just conquer this world. We could do it either peacefully or we could do it um, militarily. If you look at the card, you'll see across the top, it tells you what you would need to defeat it. You would need that much fleet strength and ground strength. And you'd have to pay that much fleet strength and ground strength by discarding those units. Down here is the diplomatic way which is you could pay any two of those three bunches of resources. So there's three energy, two materials, and a prestige. But since we're both here, we have to work that out first, because two different empires have arrived to annex this world. So the first thing we let each other know is how much um, strength that we have. So I'm starting off with three strength, because Lord Banner has a strength, and each of my units has a strength. We don't care right now about whether it's fleet strength or ground strength. We're just looking at the total. So I have a total of three. I have a total of two. So now we can take battle actions. Um, so uh, there are several different types of battle actions we can take. If neither of us takes one, then obviously I'm going to win because I'm ahead. Either of us has the option to roll this battle die. This is not the actual graphic design of the battle die. Um, and if we roll this battle die, we can only roll it once. And it's risky because it's a 50% chance something good will happen and a 50% chance something bad will happen. But if it's really close, sometimes it's worth trying it. So we could get plus two to our total military strength, which would help us defeat the other person's force. Um, we could get minus two, unfortunately. We could damage an enemy unit, and there's two of those pips on there. Or we could damage one of our own units, and there's also two pips there. So since I'm ahead, um, I'm going to pass. Now, just because I pass doesn't mean I can't go again. Uh, as long as we both don't pass consecutively. So I want to see what Norman's got up his sleeve. So if he passes, then we just resolve the battle and I would win. So let's see what he's going to play here. So he has cyborg units. Now, you've made a slight mistake. So this is a good teaching moment for the game. Okay. So the cyborg units would allow Norman to upgrade units, but they'd have to match the icon oh, down here. Oh, I don't have one. Okay. So this is for robots. And unless he's going to start tooling around with his poor infantry person, okay. so, he's you know not what? a robot. I think that this is, a, and I'm looking at this, and I realize I don't have any matching. Okay, so, so you're going to pass, so I'm, I'm not going to play a card. So then I'll conquer it. So now, well, well, wait. Okay. Uh, oh, you're going to roll the die. So, uh, so he's going to roll the die, hoping to get ahead, maybe by a couple points, or even damage one of my units, and we'll see what happens then. Or, more likely, I'm going to damage some of mine. But let's see what happens. 50% chance, not more likely. Okay, so he, he got to damage someone. So I get to choose which one is damaged. Uh, so I'm going to take my Starfighter, and I'm going to flip it over to the other side. Okay, and now you can see it has no strength. All right, so now... We'll take a look here and see that I only have a strength of two, and Norman has a strength of two. So it looks like we're tied with each other. So I'm going to take a battle action, and I'm going to play a new card that I got called War Room. This is one of the tactics I gained. So as a battle action, I can add plus two to my total fleet strength or ground strength. Um, this also increases your total military strength. Um, so... I actually now have a strength of four. So now I have a four to your two. So he can't roll the die again. We can only roll it once per battle. So I assume you're going to pass. I think I'm passing. Okay, so since I've played this card, it goes into my discard pile. And if I happen to play another card, I have to choose which card I got back. Now the good news for Norman is I didn't damage any of his units. So even though he lost, he actually didn't lose any units. But my poor unit did get shot, and I lose half of my damaged units. Norman gets to choose the half that I lose. I think it's rounded right. up. There's no choice for him now. But that's important because if I had brought only really big guys, uh, uh, or if I had brought 
a, a, a small guy had been damaged and a big guy, Norman would get to choose which one dies and the other one would be repaired. In this case, I've only got one. He explodes in a fiery mess. <laughs> um, now, that leaves me with two ground strength, which normally would not be enough to conquer this world because this world requires a fleet strength and a ground strength. However, because I played my war room, I got to add plus two to my fleet strength, so I had plenty. All right? Now, even though Lord Banner and the War Room would be enough to conquer Argos on their own, whenever you annex a world, you must discard at least one unit. So therefore, I have to lose my other unit. So now I literally own no units. I need the planet, but I have no units. All right, so that concludes the expansion phase. Now we do the end phase. The first thing we do is we're going to remove the multiplier tokens from any worlds that have ambassadors. If, if, as I mentioned before, if it was at a world without ambassadors, it would stay. So therefore, these come off the table. But then, we each immediately... Let me mark this here, that I own this world now. Because what's important now is that we each immediately get to place one onto one of the worlds in our empire that is open, that is not occupied. So even though I just gained this awesome planet Argos, I can't put the times two there because Norman and I are still there. Nor can I put it in this place where I already was before. So I'm going to put it in this place, which was not occupied, Cassitis. And Norman has the same restrictions, so since so many of his worlds are visited, he really can either pick his core world or that. And we'll talk about what the core worlds do in a little bit. Okay, so we've made those choices, and now all of our ambassadors come home with any units that they have acquired. So this guy comes home here, comes home. Norman gets to bring his two guys home in defeat. But I don't have anyone to bring home. I just have a planet. So I'm going to slide this planet over. You just have a planet. I just have a planet. <laughs> okay. All right. So now that we've done that, now we can each choose half the cards that we played and give them to any of our ambassadors. We each played one, so we each get that one back. And... Uh, now we can take our units and cards and switch them up amongst our ambassadors however we want to do. If we were playing a three or a five player game, this is when we would flip this neutral world token, which tells us that we'll be getting a different Wait, number what is of it? worlds. Bring it up close so I can see it. This is the neutral world token. Oh, I see. But since we're only playing two players, we never have to worry about that. But this would be the time that we would flip that. This would also be the time that we determine the new turn order. If someone had gone to Ra which is the, the throne world of the galaxy, which is always neutral this game, they could have changed their place in the turn order, and we would do that now. Let's actually give you a little look at what raw. Normally, raw will be printed on this map, but since we were changing it so often during playtesting, we have it as a separate piece. So, raw is the only world in the game that can... It's a, it's a uh, neutral world and can never be conquered. Um, it's the throne world. It's waiting. In fact, the entire objective of this game is to get the most empire points, and whoever has the most claims Ra and wins the game. So when you go to Ra, there's two different actions. You can go here and, and change your place in the turn order, or you can go here and get the destiny token, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And the second thing you can do is you could spend an empire point to get any two of these different combinations. All right, so we'll put this back. And uh, now we'll start the second round. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to move this forward. And then we're going to check the fade rate. No one did an event action because there's no event actions currently on the table. So this number stayed at 5. If someone had done an event action, this would have gone down. But they weren't. So we're just going to take the top 5 cards and we're going to remove them from the game. So we will not see these cards this game. And then finally, we're going to seed the next event into the future and reveal the next starting epoch, which tend to be nice ones. It's aristocratic submission. Each empire gains a prestige. So we were actually lucked out and got even more prestige. And finally, we put out another Sector 1 neutral world. So I will draw the top card. Now, if somebody had the Destiny token, we would actually draw two cards, and that person would decide which world comes out. So that's one of the reasons to go to Ra. Okay, so Series Prime is our new. Um, I keep knocking my poor little guys over. It's our new uh, 
neutral world, and it allows you to increase your standing in um, the Mystic Brotherhood, which is one of the six galactic orders. All right, so that is the event phase. And now, once again, I go first, because Norman hasn't changed the turn order. And you might say, well, what's the advantage of going second? The advantage of going second is you can watch where someone sends their units, and where you see where they've sent their units, then you can uh, make sure that you have more than they do. Zeus Ambassador number one is going to go to my core world, and we're going to show you what that does. In the beginning, every core world is customizable. Um, every single core world looks exactly the same. You could spend one empire point to do a function, but there's no function in there. The little prestige to marker that you see there means I can pay a prestige to choose the, what my core world produces. And this is one of the ways that we mitigate the fact that certain parts of the game won't appear necessarily on their own because those worlds haven't come out. So if I need something and there's no worlds that produce it, I can tell my core world to produce it. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I want to produce capital ships because I have a world that's good for that. So I'm going to first of all pay a prestige to put this function token in there. And this function token shows an icon of a capital ship. Now, anyone who goes to Dagda, which is my core world, can spend an empire point to gain a capital ship. And I can even do it right away. Ah, but I don't have an empire point yet, do I? Because you never visited my worlds. So therefore, I am just going to do that since I don't have the empire point. So if I had an empire point, I could immediately get a capital ship. But I don't, so I won't. So now it's Norman's turn. At this point, so since... I have a unit that helps with cyborgs. I'm going to do much the same. I'm going to pay the prestige. It's a robot. Oh, is that a robot? I thought... Yes. Right, your card turns your robot into that. In, into the cyborg, okay. So he is basically spent a prestige to make it so that Zeus produces robots. And now he had an empire point, because I visited him. So he's going to spend that, and he's going to get a robot... Token, uh, which is going to be from over here. There will be a bunch of them because you've got those. And that will go right underneath his ambassador so he can bring it home. He won't be able to do anything with it immediately, but he'll be able to bring it home. All right. It is my turn. Do you uh, want to show the robot token or no? Yeah, you can show him the robot token. This is not the actual icon. Oh, it's not going to be. Where did you? It's on your. It's under your gun. Oh, okay. I, I thought. Maybe. Oh, yeah, show him the actual robot. There you go. Bring it here. Where's my camera? <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Okay, guys. So it. you can see it is definitely a much more powerful unit than the simple starfighters and That's why it's so ground fighters. Okay. There you got it. Yep. Okay, I am going to send um, my leader, Lord Banner, over here to my world, Cassitis. And it allows me to pay a prestige to gain three energy and two materials. I've put my times two multiplier token there, so I'm going to pay two prestige, and I'm going to acquire six energy. So the silver one represents five. So I'm going to get six energy and four materials. So I don't have any prestige anymore, but I have lots of energy and materials. Um, and that's my turn. Send Chancellor Augustus over to there. So you're going to pay one energy? I'm going to pay one energy, and I, I am jonesing for energy at this point. Okay, and then he went to series prime, so he gets to do the function there, which is to increase his standing in the Mystic Brotherhood on the Galactic Order chart. Well, I will take this opportunity to visit Norman's World Saudi 3, so he gets another Empire point. Norman still hasn't visited me. We're a little offended over here. Um, and I'll spend an energy and a material to get a unit card, and I will spend an extra two materials so I can look at two extra cards. So I'm going to look at three of these unit cards, and then I'm going to pick one. 
and put the others on top. All right, I will take this one and I will put these two back on top and I will give this card to Lord Banner. And you have one ambassador left. And at this point, I'm going to just work. We don't have a source of energy on the board yet, do we? Yes, we have Cassitis. Oh, sure we do. But that's in your empire, and we don't go there. So instead, I'm going to use one of my starting advancements. And I am just... So as you can see, he can go to his advancements if he's really desperate for something. And I am. And he gained two energy there. Now we go to the expansion phase, and that's just going to involve Norman this time. We're not going to have any sort of conflict with each other. So uh, he can take that World Series Prime. Just like the other Sector 1 worlds, it requires one fleet strength and one ground strength, or he could pay diplomatically, but I don't think that's possible. So, No. So it, instead, and I have to get rid of my Grunt. So Chancellor Augustus has a fleet strength of one, so he doesn't have to lose his ship. Uh, but he does have to lose the ground strength by discarding All right. the unit. But I am going to use my unit, which is my nexus. In, uh, That's uh, for cruisers. And you've got him there, right? Yep, so I he has a cruiser. So we're going to show you how to use a unit card. So let's Can we hold, take a picture of it? Let's yeah, let's, let's take a look at it. So what it does is it allows him to take his cruiser and mobilize it by paying the mobilizing fee. Um, in this case, it's free to mobilize that particular card. The fact that it has a little yellow dot at the top means it's unique, which means he can only mobilize once. So let's actually keep it over here for now so we can see what it does. So he actually takes his unit and sticks it here. And you can see that instead of having a fleet strength of two, this gives it plus one now. So now that cruiser becomes the dreadnought, or excuse me, becomes the... Uh, the Nexus Explorer, and it gives him plus one strength, so now he has three fleet strength, and it also has a power, when he mobilizes this, he can spend two materials to gain any one position on the uh, Galactic Order chart. So are you going to use that ability? I am going to use that ability. Okay, and so what are you going to grab? I'm going to guess I, Knighthood. I'm just. I'm going to go one. Knighthood, yes. He has a card that helps him with Knighthood, that's why I guessed that. Okay, so... No, I have a planet that... Correct. So now he uh, has done that, so now the card gets discarded. Now, I have a question. Yes. Um, I can't use both the strength in this card and this card to, to pay. I have to actually physically discard one, one unit. That's right, and plus you need to, all that is fleet strength. And those are both fleet strength. Right. You okay. need a ground strength, so that grunt is definitely going to have to get discarded. Yeah. Bad for the grunt. You always have to lose a unit when you annex a world. They have to go down there and deal with stuff. So now you put this card over with your cards, and you place your faction token in there to show that you own that world. And what I'll do is I'll move it over here. Um, nah, I'll, I'll leave it there. And then put your token in there. Okay, now we remove our multiplier tokens. Now Norman didn't use Avalon, so therefore he keeps his there. I have to remove mine because I have someone who's here. Now we put them out again at a place where they can go. So I'm going to put this here at Argos 1. So I have an option. I can either turn this over to a triple. So that is now times that three. Times three. Or I could put out another times two if he wants. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to use it as a times three. Instead, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put out another times two. Since I have no prestige at this point. I don't see any reason to put it on Batah, so I'm going to put it on Sinbad instead. All right, so we've put those out, and um, now we return all of our ambassadors home. Norman, I see you're lacking materials. I just want to make a sales pitch that Argos 1 has a special. Or do they really? Now, in this case, I may wait to go to Argos 1 so I don't dissuade Norman from going because I want him to go and gain from this sale here because I need Empire points. So I need Nor right now, because there's no worlds that give me Empire points, I really want Norman to come for a visit. So maybe I'll wait a little bit. All right. Um, you can exchange cards and units now. And I can bring my card back. 
From where? Well, I can from my from my stack. I can bring half of my cards back. Round it up. Round it up. All right. The turn order hasn't changed, so we move on to the next round. Okay. So we move this over to round three. This is still at position five, so that means we discard five more cards. We see the new card, and before we reveal this, we see a double-sided card is here. Um, and this tells us that Epoch 2 has begun, and all empires immediately receive Ambassador number 3. So we'll have an extra Ambassador this round. That card goes away, and we'll put out our new Ambassadors. If that card had been revealed in the middle of a round, we would have immediately gained our Ambassadors. This is our last starting Epoch card. I'll flip it over, and it says, Unbridled Innovation. Every Empire in turn order adds one times two token to one barbaric or frontier world in its empire without a multiplier. So these are the barbaric worlds, these are the frontier worlds. I will place it here on Cassitis. Hmm. All right, so I will go first. Um, I will send Zeus Ambassador number three over to Sinbad. Normally gets another Empire point due to my generosity. And I will move myself up two times on this. And when I do, I pull the first token here, and this column grants energy, so I gained a bonus energy for getting here first on this track. And that's all I did. All right, I'm going to use mine, and of course... Welcome. I have to repay. And a free massage. And so... I have this one as well. So that gives me four materials. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, now I've made it so it's harder for me to use it, but remember, Argos 1 is in my empire. I can go there without paying prestige, so no problem there. Since you went to my world, I do gain an empire point. So I will now move my next character, my next ambassador, uh, to Dagda once again. This time I have an empire point to spend, so I will spend it to acquire our first capital ship of the game. And it's similar to the robot. Uh, it has a lot of points. It has two fleet strength and one ground strength. So I will put that there beneath that character, and it's your turn. Then. So, um, we forgot to do something. What's that? Put out a new world. That's true. We did forget to put out a new world. So why don't we just back this up? And cut That's this okay. Out. We'll just put this right in. That's fine. Yes, the new world that came out was Yggdrasil, which is another world that provides... We're getting a lot of the Galactic Orders out here. Okay. That doesn't almost, affect... Almost all. Yep, that doesn't affect my turn at all, so go for it. Here. I am going to go... to Zeus. And get myself another robot. Okay. Did I give you a little pile of those? Here you go. Alright, so I'm going to... And I'm going to use his card. Uh, which gives you an energy. I'm going to send Lord Banner to visit your other world here while you've got all these wonderful specials going on. So you gain another Empire point. And I actually pass you a little bit here. And now I have two Mystic Brotherhood. One of the reasons why we want to get on the board here with these is that we're going to start having events that are going to check to see who's the event leader, and that's going to require us to be ahead in these different uh, places. So that was my turn. All right, so I am going to... also use Series Prime. I don't have to pay a prestige, because it's, it's mine, and I'm going to... Jump ahead. Where are we? 
and that will get me another energy. energy. Yep. Um, I'm going to go to Epimetheus. This lets me change one of my galactic orders into any other galactic order. So I'm going to use this to go down in the Merchant Alliance and to go up in the Order of Knighthood. Norman is still technically considered ahead of me in the Order of Knighthood because we're stacked on top of each other, and the lower you are in the stack, the, the higher you are in the standing with that. And that will matter if an event comes out. Um, the other thing I get when I do that is a bonus energy, so I'll take that, and I'm done. Okay, so... You can see now the edge he has for going second, because he can wait to see if I went to that neutral world or not. Right, and so I'm going to use that. I need to pay an energy, because I'm taking That's right. two. So he paid to bring his troops there. He immediately goes up in the science. And uh, you're the last one to go, so now it's expansion, and you can conquer Yggdrasil. All right. I think, I'm, I, think I have enough to do that, but I will have to discard. Actually, you'll have to discard the robot, because Why? you need a ground strength and a ah. fleet strength. And uh, good your, thing I can make robots. Your ambassador doesn't have any strength. He, that's true. I, I need heroes, don't I? Um, so I'm going to lose the robot, unfortunately. I have to build a new one. But it's worth it. And so now that will be mine, will it not? All right. All right, it's time for the next round. So uh, we're going to move this forward to round four. Again, because we didn't have any event actions come up, we're going to burn the top five cards. Now, before I see the next event, we see that our present events are empty. So when that happened, we should always shuffle these cards so that if we did get to see what one of them was, we won't know exactly when it will come up. So finally, we'll see this Epic 2 event, and we'll reveal this new card. All right, and this card says, Favor of the Science Guild, which is real good if you're Norman, because he's ahead in the Science Guild. And uh, basically, it's going to look for the leader. So when we look at the leader, we're going to check across the top here to see who is the leader in this first faction. Norman's the leader because it's science. If no one had science, we would go to these later ones. But since Norman has science then he'll win this, and he gains an advancement card, which is very strong. Um, so he is going to get to draw an advancement card, and if he pays materials, he can look at multiples. I am going to pay two. So by paying two materials, he can look at three advancement cards and choose which one he wants. And then he's going to place that on top of one of his starting advancements. But I am going to choose that one, and I will put these back in this order. Okay, so he now, instead of putting that into his hand, he flips it and reveals it and covers up one of his old ones. Why don't you show it to the camera? And then you can See, tell us. Was it the six okay. So this, allow, can you read it, what it does? Uh, move up to six of my units from one at retinue or world to any one of your ambassadors or controlled worlds. So he gets to, uh, by, but he still has to send an ambassador to the wormhole generator to, to use it. So you pick a world. Now we put out a new world. This is going to be a sector two world. And this world is Orpheus, which lets us spend materials for vehicles. I'm going to go to Elysium, and I'm actually going to sell my beautiful capital ship for three prestige. So I get rid of this, and I get three prestige, and I'm done. I will go up. So since he moved up to the next spot on the track that had a token, he was able to gain a free material. 
Okay, I'm going to come visit your world again because of my extreme generosity. Uh, and I'm going to come to Ptah. So you gain an empire point from the reserve. This guy is going to pay uh, a prestige to get a cruiser and a starfighter. And since he has a times two, I can pay a second prestige and get two. Um, so now I have... Uh, under this guy, I've got two starfighters and two cruisers, which is good because I have no unit token besides that. So here, thanks. And that was my turn. I think I'm just going to take advantage. So I gain an empire point, and you can get two tactics. So the first time you draw it, do you want to spend extra materials? Um. Not the first time. Okay, so he'll draw a tactic card, and he gets to do two because I have the times two multiplier, and he can give that to any of his characters, his ambassadors, and then he can okay. do it yet again. That's interesting. So this time, I'm going to pay an extra material. So you can look at two of them and pick one. And I'm going to take that one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this destiny token. And while I have it, I'm going to get to choose uh, to get rid of one of the worlds that comes out each turn. So it gives me a little bit more choice of what I think I need to have in the game. You might say to yourself, why doesn't Norman just come there and take that away from me? Because when I take this, I actually put my worker over that to show that for the rest of this round, no one else can have the destiny marker. And then I can also do the second function, which is to spend an empire point to get any combination of those uh, material batches, those resource batches. So I'm going to take two materials and one prestige. And that's it for my visit to Ra. I am, even though I, I would like to have a upgrade to my ambassador, I'm not going to use it twice. Okay. I'm going to pay one of my knighthood and one energy. And one energy. And now he gets to get a hero card, which will let him replace one of his ambassadors with a new character. Are you playing something first? Um, actually, I might as well, since I don't think I'm going to use anything else. Um, I'm going to use Accelerated Procurement. Why don't you show that? Yeah. So I don't have to pay the energy. Okay. What does the card do? Uh, when paying the cost to activate a world, you may pay minus two energy or minus one material. Okay, so that gets discarded. Now he gets a hero card from the hero card stack, and he can choose before looking at it to pay materials if he wants. And I will. So I'm going to look at two heroes and choose one. And he can replace any of his characters except for Chancellor Augustus, his leader. But I think this suits me better. So I will go get Prince Godwin. That shows that he has much better stats than our other characters. And he also has a special power that he can use when he goes to Ra. Okay, so, that's your hero card. And so now he has to choose one of his ambassadors other okay. than his leader. What, are, what right. else are we looking at? So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to replace ambassador number three. Ambassador number three. Okay. All right. And that is your turn. That is my turn. I'm going to send him to Epimetheus. And I'm going to change... Uh, I'm going to remove one of my Mystic Brotherhoods to increase myself in Knighthood. And whenever I use Epimetheus, it also gives me an extra energy, so I'll take that as well. I'll get some more. Okay, so that was my last ambassador. So once again, his advantage for going last is that he gets to now know that I didn't go for one of those worlds. Right. Well, neither of us seems to be a military dreadnought at this point. Instead, I think I will. Science. All right, so you're going to increase yourself up in science. All 
Okay, um, so now we remove the multipliers that were used. So I have one that wasn't used. Um, and I actually used, I used yours over here. And then we place them down on places that were not used. So I'll return this to Argos again to get this super material special going. So we have a world that has remained a neutral world. So uh, there, there will be two this, this round. We're on to round five. Again, we haven't done any event action, so we're just going to burn another five of these. And we seed the next one of these, and it's epoch three, so we now get our final workers. Okay, so, uh, so we seeded the new event, which means we'll have to do one of these, and it is the favor of the Merchant Alliance, which I think I still have. I, I think you have. So the favor of the Merchant Alliance is going to check to see who has the most of the Merchant Alliance. What's interesting about this one is it has two rewards for the person who's in first place and the person who's in second place. So what we'll do is the person in first place gets six energy, which is great. Norman doesn't have any merchant, so we'll check to see if he has any Senate, which is the next one. And he does not. But he does have Mystic Brotherhood, yes? Oh, yes. Yes, you're, you're in the lead there, so you'll get three energy. You just barely qualified. Barely. Okay, and I got six energy. So I got three. If he had had nothing in there, then no one would have gotten the second place. I would not have gotten them both. Very important to stress. Okay, that goes there. And now we put out, because it tells us the Sector 2 world, we put out another one. But instead of just drawing blind, because I have the destiny marker, we're going to draw two and I'm going to pick one. Okay, so we have Cicero. Let's actually show them what our choices are. So Cicero lets you pay Senate, which neither of us has ability to have Senate at the moment, to get three energy and a prestige. And Gurion lets us spend Mystic Brotherhood, which we both have, to get an event card and a tactic card. And because I've wanted to get event cards, I'm going to choose Gurion. So we're going to put Gurion out. It's another Sector 2 neutral world. And Cicero is going to get uh, placed at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so can you get the token for that? So now we have two neutral worlds, Gurion and Orpheus. They're both frontier worlds. I'm going to go to Orpheus with Lord Banner. So I'm going to send him there. Uh, He's going to spend two energy to bring a whole bunch of stuff there. So he's going to bring uh, two cruisers and two starfighters. And because the reason I went there so early is by getting there early, then I can freely also spend a material to gain a vehicle. So I am loaded up over there because I got one right at Orpheus. Norman could do the same thing, but he'd have to pay a prestige to get that. And I have no prestige. So instead, what I will do... is I will go to Garyon with Prince Godwin. Um, I assume if you want to conquer that, you'd want to bring at least one no, unit. No, because I own a wormhole. Oh, he wants to use his wormhole. It's cheaper. Okay, so but you have to put a person there. I have to put a person there. But All right, so you sent Godwin that. there. I assume you want to use that text. I do want to use the text. So we're going to spend this. This will be the first time we'll get to see someone actually do an event action. So he does the event action before the tactic. So before you look at that card, okay, you can spend your last material to do research. So you could look at two events, pick one, and you'll seed that into the future events. Um, so no, I will not. I will just... He's going to draw blind. Okay, okay so he's going to get to peek at that event card. So at least he knows what the effect of the event will be and which galactic orders will benefit from it. All right. So uh, this is the event. I don't get to see it. He doesn't get to see it. And it just goes into the future events. Into the future events. And so we immediately trigger an event. The main difference when we trigger an event in the middle of a turn is that uh, we don't put out a new world. So we'll flip this over. And it is Favor of the Mystic Brotherhood, which belong. We've got a lot of Mystic Brotherhood going on. So... Norman has the most in the Mystic Brotherhood, so he'll gain a prestige and do another event action. 
Ooh. Since I have some in the Mystic Brotherhood, I at least get the secondary reward, which is a prestige. So we've got a double event triggering here, which is kind of exciting. The other thing to know is that because Norman triggered this, he's going to actually hang on to this card face down so that in case we get a, a scoring at the end that rewards you for triggering events, he'll, he'll know that he did that. Okay, so now that the present events are empty, we're going to shuffle the future events and put them into the present events. We'll put the twos on top of the only three. The other thing that happened is because Norman triggered an event, this went down to four, which means we'll burn fewer events later. Now, Norman, you've got another event from that event, so therefore that's the only event that triggers an event, by the way, in the entire game. Once again, you can look at the next one. You could pay a material to look at two uh, and choose, or you could just trigger the next one. I think I'm just going to seed this one. So he's going to take a look at it once again and then put it into the future events. Okay. So that goes face down. We move this down again. So now we're down to three. And we trigger this next event. This next event is the proxy war. It's looking for someone in the Senate, which we have none. Then it's looking for someone in the merchant, which would be me. And it says, the event leader chooses one frontier world in any empire. That world may be contested. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> yes, so now this is where, because a proxy war is going on at one of Norman's planets, it means that uh, I can actually conquer that world, or he can at least send an ambassador there to take care of the situation. So, Norman will have a nice little token for that. For this prototype, I'm stealing Twilight Imperium flags. These do not come with the game, just to be clear. Um, so, we will place the token onto the event. Now, Norman still gets this card because he triggered it. But we'll leave it face up for now with the flag on it. And I'm going to identify which world has the proxy world going on. At the moment, Norman only owns one frontier world, so that's the world I'm going to choose. So a proxy war is going on at Saudi 3, which means it could be conquered. Um, or annexed by me. If there's an ambassador there at the end of the round, that event will go away. It helps Norman that I've sent all of my units over here. So if he wants to take care of that, he won't have too many problems. I could just... You could just send at least one ambassador there this turn and it'll go away. So after doing that event action, which chained another event action, if you remember, Gurion also gave you a tactic card. So again, you can ah. just draw the top card or you can pay a material to look at two. I'm going to just take a tactic. Okay, and he can give that to any of his ambassadors. I'm going to go to my own world here. Uh, unless, were you thinking of going there, Norm? I could be generous. <laughs> I can be kind. Well, you don't have a lot of materials. I don't I have, have a lot of materials. I have so. no empire points. So even though we're rivals, we can sort of open things up for each other. But you know what? I'm going to instead go to... Um, I'm going to go to Cassitis and spend two prestige to get six energy and two materials. I have a lot of those resources. So You do. So now it's your turn. All right, I am going to go to Zeus, and I am going to pay two Empire points to get two robots. That's strong. Again, he was able to do that because he has a times two multiplier there. I'm going to use his card to get me some energy because why not? Okay, I need. I'm jealous of you having a, a nice leader like that. So I'm going to go visit your world uh, here, uh, Avalon. So you gain an empire point, and uh, I'm going to spend uh, a rank in the Order of Knighthood and an energy. And I'll spend it one material so I can look at two heroes. And I'll convert somebody over. I'll take this one. Okay, so I'm taking Albrecht. Thanks. So I'm going to convert Dag to ambassador number two into Albrecht. And it's your turn. All right, well, since you left that open for me so kindly, I will. And that gives me 
four materials because it has the doublet on it. All right, I'm going to send Albrecht to my world, but instead of getting a capital ship, um, I'm going to spend a prestige to change what that does. Um, and uh, you know what? No, I'm going to change my mind. I'm just going to take the, another capital ship. That's fine. I'll give it to Albrecht. He likes capital ships. Uh, so that's all he's doing. You're up. I'm going to use this. I'm going to put somebody there. And I'm going to use his accelerated procurement, which allows me to paying the cost to activate a world. I could pay either two less energy or one less material. I'm going to yeah, pay nice. one less material. Or, or, yes, so you pay one, one less material. So yeah, I'm so going you to pay, pay an energy. one energy. So you discard the card, and then you get a unit card. And do you want to pay materials or no? No, I think I'm just going to take a unit. The more of these unit cards we get, the more unpredictable our battles are going to become. Yes, and... <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I'm going to uh, send uh, my last ambassador to an advancement that we all start with called the Imperial Palace. Um, I can spend an energy to activate the Galactic Order die. Either I can take the icon that's on the die, which is what we started with, which is uh, the Mining Coalition, um, or I can roll the die and get something new. But since no one has the Mining Coalition, in case an event comes up that involves that, it seems like a good idea. So I'll pay an energy, and I'll move up. So I'm the only one that has anything in the Mining Coalition. And because I didn't roll the die, it stays still on the Mining Coalition. So I've got a little bit of everything on the lower half of this board here. And I'm done. All right, well, I'm going to use my wormhole generator. So I'll just take it from here. Okay, so he's using his wormhole generator to move two ships over there to be with Prince Godwin, which can be a dirty trick at times, but I wasn't there, so. Okay, so that's it for the ambassador phase. Now it's time for the expansion phase. I go first because of the turn order, so we'll resolve this over here, which is Orpheus. This one is a frontier world. It requires a two fleet strength and a two ground strength. Um, Lord Banner still has his wonderful war room, uh, which allows him to add plus two to anything. Then on top of it, I have a unit card called the Dreadnought Cruiser, and it lets me mobilize cruisers, of which I have two, for one energy each, and it gives them plus two to their fleet strength. However, the text says, each starfighter in my escort allows me to mobilize a dreadnought for free. So I brought starfighters and dreadnought cruisers, so it's a pretty sweet combination. So basically, um, any one of these can be mobilized so that it has a four fleet strength, which is more than enough of what I need. Um, so I will use... Uh, I will use that for free. I just kind of wanted to demonstrate it, so I played the card. I'm probably not going to actually use that, because now that I look at it... Uh, I think you have enough. No, actually I am going to use it, because that's two fleet strength. I need two ground strength. Lord Banner has one ground strength, and the War Room provides the other. So I play the War Room as well. I discard this cruiser. I earn this planet and I put my marker on it. I'll kind of slide it over here. So now I own Orpheus. And the rest of these unit tokens were not used, so they stay with him. Okay, and then you take care of yours. Okay, well, I have... I have... Uh, you need two fleet strength and two ground strength. And I have both of those, but I have to discard one. So... The reason why he has two fleet strength and two ground strength is that his hero actually has one fleet strength and two ground strength by himself. He's tough. So, Prince Godwin. So he has had, he just needs one more fleet strength, and so he's going to just discard a, uh, a starfighter. If for some reason Godwin could have taken the planet by himself, he still has to get rid of at least one unit token. So he lost one. 
All right. right. So then he puts just puts his token on there. Then we remove our multiplier tokens. Well, wait, wait. There, there is one other thing that that needs that would probably be taken care of, and that is I do have an ambassador there. Yep. So that event goes away. So his proxy war is over. He was very lucky. I had already sent all my troops out. So now that card just goes face down with your other card that you triggered. Oh, does this go with me? Okay. Yep. All right. And so the proxy war is over. Uh, remove our multiplier tokens from wherever they were used. And then we put out a new one. So I'm going to put one here at Epimetheus because I don't have much choice. My I'm rules are all there. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it on Daedalus because nobody's there. Okay, our ambassadors all come home. Now notice that when I bring an ambassador home with a stack of units, he, he still has those units, but if I wanted to assign them to someone else, one of the last things we do at the end of the round is we can move all that stuff around. Okay, now we look at our cards. I have I played two cards. How many did you play, Norm? I played two. So we each get one card back. We don't know, since our, we keep our cards face down, the other person doesn't know which card we've taken back. So we move on now to round six out of nine. Uh, now this track, since Norman did two events that turn, this went down to a three, so we're only going to burn three cards from here. After we burn those cards, the very first thing we do so we don't forget is we put this back at five. It resets every round. And then finally, we seed this event into the future, and we reveal this. Uh, and this is Soldiers of Fortune, um, and this is only for the Merchant Alliance. So I'm ahead in the Merchant Alliance, uh, and I gain an infantry, a starfighter, and a tactic card. So that was pretty <laughs> nice. All right, so let me grab all that. And I can arrange them however I like. And I will pay an extra uh, material to look at two tactic cards. Put that there, that there. Um, well, now that's interesting. I'll take this one. Now that we've done the event phase, now it's time for uh, putting out, oh, we have to still put out our new world. Once again, we get to look at two. And this is, actually this time, this is a Sector 3 world. This will be our first Sector 3 world. These will be a lot harder to defeat. We have Eden. Eden lets you spend two material and an energy to get either, that's what the little slash means, either a unit card or an event card and a tactic card. So lots of options there. The other world is Tartarus, which lets us spend any point in a galactic order to gain a unit card. Um, but since I have tons of energy and materials, I'm definitely going to pick Eden. I don't, you know, I don't have the ability to just generate galactic orders like Norman. He's got them all over the place. So this one gets put in the bottom of the deck. And once again, I was able to choose because I have the destiny marker and Norman hasn't claimed it from me, which he can do whenever he goes to Ra. I'm going to send this person to your series prime. All right. So you gain an empire point, and because he's got a times two multiplier there, I'll gain two in the Mystic Brotherhood. Norman's still a little bit ahead of me there because he's on the bottom of the stack, and that's my turn. Well, uh, since I'm going to do that as well. And so now you move ahead twice, which means you've moved all the way up to slot five for the first time, which means he gains a coveted prestige. And I totally need it. If you get to number six, you actually get an empire point. So, all right. So I'm up. And point out, I didn't have to pay a prestige because it's my it's world. your world. Yep. I am gonna want to get a jump start on that whole Eden thing. So I'm gonna send Albert there. He dares you to come and fight him. He hopes you come. <laughs> all right. So he's gonna bring. He's got four units. He's got uh, a cruiser, a vehicle, a capital ship, and a starfighter. So you've got quite the variety there. And it's only going to cost him two energy because it's four units and you pay half. Basically, one for every two. So that is two energy. When he gets there, I'm going to use the text on that world to spend two materials and an energy. 
and I'm going to use it. I can use it to get an event card and a tactic, or I can get a unit card. He has so many different... I, I want to do the event action, but he has so many different types of units, I think it's smart to get the unit card. So, I'll pay an extra material to look at two unit cards. Okay, and I'll keep this one. And then he's going to play a tactic card for one material. This is a tactic card I picked up um, from the Soldiers of Fortune. And it's called Scout Mission. After visiting a world outside of your empire, which I just did, I can pay a material, which is what I just paid in order to play this card, to gain an event action. So I'm going to discard this card. Do I want to spend another material to look? Yes, I. of course I do. I'm going to spend an extra <laughs> so I can look at two of these and see the one of my choice. Okay, then. I'll put this one here. And then we'll seed this one and reveal this one. Now I'm going to get to keep this because I triggered it, just in case there's an end game score at the end. Um, so, the card I trigger is the World Ship, um, which is great for Norm, but not terrible for me, because we both have Mystic... It, it looks for the Mystic Brotherhood. So Norm gets two Prestige and two Empire points from that. Huge. And I get one Prestige and one Empire point, and I'm happy with that also. And then I hang on, I'll just put this face down just in case we get a bonus point. The reason why we keep saying that is at the end of the game, um, the, all of the Epoch 4 events can give you scores based upon what you have in your empire. So we're really going to want to use those event actions when we start seeing the Epic 4 events come up because that's how you get bonus points for things. So one of the things that you can get bonus points for is the number of events that you've triggered. Now we have no more present events. So we look at these, they're all Sector 3, so we're going to shuffle them up, and they're going to become the new present events. And just as a reminder, when someone does an event action, we don't put out a new world. That's only during the event phase. Okay, and thanks. And we put this down because I did an event action. Okay, um, that's me. You're up. Okay, so I guess you want Eden. It looks like you... No, I want you to come to Eden, and I want to conquer it in front of your face. So come um, on over. Um... I crave battle. I'm actually going to... Uh, t -t 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 -t. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pay prestige. Okay. And I'm going to get a... So you got a cruiser and a starfighter there. Cruiser and a starfighter, because... All right. Um... I'm going to send uh, this ambassador to Dagda and spend my last emp the Empire point I just got, basically, from the event, and get another capital ship. Okay. And you're up. All right, well... I am going to send Prince Godwin to Ra to claim the... You want the turn order or the destiny? Destiny. And then you can also spend an empire point for resources. Um, and I'm going to spend an empire point... I have no empire points and you've got four... Um, what am I going to get? Well, it's nice to have the prestige, uh, but in this case, I'm going to spend it for energy and materials. And I'm going to use Prince Godwin's special power, which means that I'm going to drop down below one for two more prestige points. To use his special card. I used his special card. Nice. I hate to keep giving you points, but I have things I need to do. Um, 
No, I'm going to instead, I'm going to go to Epimetheus, uh, and I'm going to get rid of one of my Mystic Brotherhood in order to gain the Senate, since no one has the Senate. And I also get an energy when I do that because of the text of the world. I'm done. All right. I think I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to also use a Mystic Brotherhood, and I'm going to do an event and get a tactic. Okay. Do you want to spend materials for the event? Um, actually, I will. I'll spend one. Okay, so you look at two. Puts the other one back. I put the other one back, so I'm going to seed that one. Okay, and then we move this down, and we reveal the event that he triggered, which he'll get to keep, which is Meeting of the Eidolon League. This is exciting. We're getting a new core world. So, uh, Raven enters play. So, we need to grab Raven, which is in one of those stacks, I think. <laughs> if not, I'll have to look for it. But basically, this is how we get the extra core world. Um, and... Uh, if Raven is already present, place the next multiplier token on it. The event leader may immediately send an ambassador to Raven. I'm the event leader because it's knighthood. This is the one I seeded before. Um, so Norman gets to keep the card, but I get to send uh, an ambassador to it. He did an event. Now he's getting a tactic card. Okay. I'm just going to send him to Argos and get two materials. You know what? I'm going to also go there. And... I'm going to get the two materials. I'm going to need some more. Okay. I, actually, I, yeah, I, I should probably change. <laughs> you should probably make some change. Make okay. some change. Yeah. And I'm going to use my tactic that I just got. It says if I get at least two materials, I get two energy. Nice. And I get an Empire Point. And you do have to pay a prestige because I was there. Right. You get an Empire Point for what? Because he visited, I visited his world. Oh, because he's on your world. Got it. All right, and then we only have one thing in the expansion phase. Now, this is a Sector 3 world. It's a little bit tougher to take. You need a 3 fleet strength and a 3 ground strength. Albrecht by himself has 2 fleet strength and 1 ground strength. Um, I have the war room that lets me add 2. So this is going to let me add 2 ground strength. So that gives me enough ground strength, and I still need fleet strength, so I'll use my Starfighter, which is the only unit I actually lose. So now my Starfighter provides me with one fleet strength. Albrecht provides me with two. That gives me the three fleet strength. Albrecht has one ground strength, and the War Room gives me the other two. So I discard the War Room, I lose the Starfighter, um, and I gain Eden. So I'll keep the card. Put my faction token there. Just slide it over a little bit. And I have Albrecht's card that says, after Albrecht annexes a world, gain three energy. Keeps the energy train rolling. Okay, now we remove multiplier tokens. Nobody used Daedala, so that stays. Series Prime loses its token. And then we put new times twos. I'm going to put mine on Elysium. We begin the next round. So it's now round seven. This is on three, because Norm and I each did an, an event action. So we're going to just burn the top two cards here. And we're going to restore that back to five. We're going to seed this card. And we're going to flip this one over. And this is Secrets of the Deep Earth. It's looking for mining, so that investment I made earlier has panned out nicely. Um, after that, it's looking, though, for Mystic Brotherhood, and you're still just ahead of me, so you got the second place one. So I get six energy and two uh, empire points. You get three energy and one empire point. And we get a Sector 4 world this time. So the fact that we've been doing all these event actions has been moving these along to the extent that we're now getting a lot more 
of the higher sector worlds. We only had one sector three world, Eden, as a neutral world, and that's it. That's the only one we're going to get. So Norman has the destiny marker, so he'll get to look and choose. So we have Oberon, which just allows you to pay an energy to get any galactic order icon. Very strong. And the other choice is Atlantis, which is a complicated one. It lets you spend science or a lot of energy to get a prestige and an empire point. I think I will go with Atlantis. Okay, so Oberon gets put on the bottom. So this is a sector four. All this is going to require four fleet strength and four ground strength to conquer. It's very difficult. But it's worth four points at the end of the game, so that's strong. All right, I'm going to send Albrecht there. I don't have the science like you do, but I do have a lot of energy, so I'm going to spend Albrecht. I'm going to bring Albrecht there. He's going to spend two energy. Bring four units there. When he gets there, he's going to spend another four energy to activate Atlantis, which will give him a prestige and an empire point. And that's my turn. I'm going to do that. Oh, nice. So you gain two science and scoop up an energy and a material along the way. All right, and that's it. All right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send Dagda Ambassador 3 to Elysium and use the times 2 to get to transfer both of these capital ships into three prestige each. Now, you might be saying to yourself, how am I able to get my capital ships to trade when I didn't pay to bring them with me. Because in this case, um, when you spend units to get something, you don't have to bring them with you. They'll be delivered separately. So otherwise, that energy to transport them would be a whole extra cost, which wouldn't be fair. So in this case, because it's got a times two, I destroy two, basically, basically turning them into luxury yachts is the story behind that. The cards, expl <laughs> the cards explain what's going on. Um, so these two are removed from the game, but I get six prestige, and if you've been paying attention, you know that prestige is very hard to come by in this game, so that was, I've been building up for a while for that. Um, and then you can continue on. Okay, let's see, you, you went big, didn't you? I have a strength of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine showing. Not too big. I may want those luxury yachts back. But I also have three cards. I think I am going to send some guys. Oh, it could be a little to Atlantis. Oh yeah, the prince versus the warlord. There we go. And so you're going to normally pay two energy for that. But I'm going to instead use my tactic. I only have to pay one because now with my, the cost when I use this is uh, one energy for every four units. So what's the name of that tactic? Uh, rapid deployment. Okay. I'm going to go to Cositis and spend a prestige to get three energy and two materials. That's it. I think I'm going to go to Series Prime. So I'm just going to bump myself up. I'm going to go to Eden and pay two materials and an energy. I'm gonna get an event card. I'm gonna spend two extra materials. Look at three. Okay. I'm gonna seed that here, and I'm gonna draw this one. Okay, so, um, this meeting of the Eidolon League is for this, 
So I'll hang on to this card because I'm the one who's, who did it. We'll knock this down to a four. And uh, uh, I get to immediately put someone there, even if it's someone who's already gone. So I will move him there. And I will go up in... Um, I'll go up here in the uh, Mining Coalition. And uh, that was my turn, so you're up. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go there. And I will do an event and get a tactic. And there is a four underneath there, by the way. Yeah. So, are you going to so pay I, materials? I, no, I think I'm going to save the materials. Okay. These should be shuffled. All right. So th this it one is... It doesn't trigger. Oh, okay. You're just seeding this one. I'm just seeding this. All right. So that goes there, and we reveal this one, which I just shuffled these. This is Loyalist Uprising. The event leader, which would be me because I have the Senate, chooses a luxury world in any empire that may be contested. <laughs> okay. So let's put our... So you get to keep this again. Put the green flag on there, and I guess it looks like it's going to be Ptah. So again, because it happened in the middle like this, you have the opportunity to do something about it if you want to. So that was your turn. You also get a tactic card. Yes. I'm going to move him to Epimetheus, and I'm going to lower myself down in Mystic Brotherhood and increase myself in Mining Coalition, which gains me an energy because I'm the first one to get there. And you're up. Okay. I'm going to use my Wormhole. Send some more troops in. Send some more troops in. Oh boy, it's going to be exciting. Because I figure you probably have things going. All right, well, it's time to do a fight. This is the big battle right here for Atlantis. Um, so I have a total of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll put my guys out here. And what is your t new total at? Uh, what do you have? Nine. Oh. And let's see. My new total is... Uh, what did I have? 13 before? 19. I think I'm just going to pass. At this point, I have it, right? Yep. See, All right, so you have to pay four and four. You have a fleet strength of one and a ground strength of two, so you need three more in space and two in the, on the ground. I'm still better off losing one robot... <laughs> And two fighters. Okay. All right, so the world is yours. The so mark it. All right, so we move this to round eight. Um, we burn the top three cards. All right, then we move this back to five. Then we see this. We don't know what this one is. And we reveal this one. And it is Trade War. This is one that I saw before. And uh, it benefits you if you have the Merchant Alliance, which I have. Um, you don't have that. The secondary is the um, Mining Coalition, which I you don't, don't have. have. And the third one is the Knight. So you don't actually benefit from this one at all. Um, so, But I don't get both rewards, just the first one. So I get four uh, materials, which I desperately needed, and two Empire Points. And then we put out a new Sector 4 world. Two of them. And you get to choose them. So we have Monolith 1, which lets you exchange in a robot for six re uh, materials, or Jacinth 5, which lets you turn in a vehicle for seven energy. Oh, I know which one's going. The robot one, I assume. Yes. <laughs> That's the one you're keeping, right? Sure. Okay. All right, so we'll just put this right here. That's the new neutral world. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this Dagda Ambassador number three back to, 
to basically he's going to move to my core world Dagda, so he's going to use the function on it. But instead of making another capital ship, I am going to discard a prestige to change this so that it now looks at events. Uh, this one? Mm -hmm. It lets me look at events, and I get three bonus peaks with it, in addition to whatever I want to pay for. Um, so that cost me prestige just to put that token there. And then I spend an empire point to actually do it. So I get to look at at least four event cards, and I can spend materials to look at more. Um, I will. I'll spend two so that I'm looking at a total of six of these event cards. That's the deck, isn't it? Uh, not quite. And these are very important because they help you discover what the final end game scoring conditions are going to be. Okay, so I know which one I'm going to seed and it's that one but I'm going to put the others back in the order of my choice. Okay. So I seeded that one, so I know what one of the endgame scoring conditions is going to be. But I triggered this one, which is still Epic 3. And this is... Oh, this is going to be... Oh, this would have been bad for me. Um, but it's good for you because you have the science. This is Surprise Attack. The event leader may discard two of his empire's units to discard one advancement card in any empire. Fortunately, Norman is ahead in that one, and I have no advancement cards, so I'm okay. I don't think you had great units to discard. You only have a few anyway. Well, but I, I, didn't, I didn't want to target it against me. Yes. Yep, smart. Okay, so, that's so, why I, I, so I, I keep go. it, but nobody gets annihilated. Um, now, that's the last present event. And one of these is Sector 3, so that'll go on top. So mix these two scoring ones. And now we have a new present event stack. Okay, and that was an event action. So you're up. Well, I think I'm going to just go there and pay a prestige. And that will give him a cruiser and a fighter. Okay. All right, um, there's all kinds of exciting things can happen now. I'm going to do the simple thing, and I'm going to move him to Argos 1 and gain 4 materials. reason I had a times two multiplier there. I think I'm just going to go to Sinbad and activate it twice. Okay, so you're now right behind, you're on top of me, which means I'm slightly ahead of you there. I am going to send this guy um, to Eden. He's going to spend two materials and an energy to do an event action. I've already seen the top one. I'm just going to remind myself what it is. Okay. Then I do this one. So this goes down. And this one is the meeting of the Eidolon League again. Except this time, you get to send someone, Norman, because it's looking for... Um, Mystic Brotherhood? Mystic Brotherhood. Yeah. And you can even send someone that you've already sent somewhere else, if you like. Oh! In which case I'll use him. Okay. Um, yeah, I might as well. So what? Do... So you gain any one galactic order of your choice. In which case, we'll do that one. Okay. And then I get a tactic card, and I'll just draw the top one. You're going to do an event action? I'm going to do an event action. You're going to spend materials? Nope. Okay, you're just going to look at the top one. I should remember what that is, but I'm not sure. Okay. 
And so that just gets seeded into the future. And this will be our first scoring event. This is Tycoon. Uh, every empire, I think we both do well with this one, every empire scores empire points equal to the value of its remaining energy divided by three round up. It's, as with all of these events, it's a maximum of six. So I have over 18, so I'll get the full six. And I'll get five, because I've got 14. Very good. So grab five uh, victory points. All right, and you get to keep that since you seeded it. You triggered it, rather, and now it's my turn. Oh, what devious scheme shall I do? <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to send Albrecht to Monolith 1. It's going to cost me... Now that we've already scored that other event, I'm a little bit more freewheeling with my energy. I'll spend three energy. To move all these here, that gives me a total strength of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm not going to use the function of that place because I don't have any robots. Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, follow up with the same. Now he's. This is. Uh, 10, 13. What did you say yours was? 10. All right, so I have strength of 13. You have to pay energy to move them. I'm going to... Use your special card. Use my special card. It only costs one energy. Rapid deployment. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there he is. Mm -hmm. This is where I play a little trick on you. So, as long as you announce it first, it's not as, it's not as bad. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send Lord Banner, hero of the hour, mm -hmm. uh, to his world here, which is being contested, which is Ptah. Okay, so you gain an empire point. Your guy is no longer there, so I don't have to pay a prestige for that, but I do pay a prestige to buy units there. So that gives me uh, same. the same thing. So I get a cruiser and a fighter. And then for the first time, I'm using his power, which is, after Lord Banner moves, move one of your infantry, starfighters, star cruisers, or vehicles to Baron Banner's current world for free. And I will move um, I will move cruiser there. So I have nothing on the ground though. That's interesting. But it's giving me two more strength. Yep, that's fine. I only have one point on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's your turn. Well, I'm going to move these two guys. Because over to here. Okay. Make it so that you'll probably win that place. Right. Well, <laughs> I know. It was one of those things. Yep. So we're going to see some new rules this turn. So that's kind of exciting. Okay. So uh, now it's time for expansion. Since I'm first in the turn order, I'll choose to resolve Pata. Now, since he no longer shifts there, I have the chance to take that over. I don't have the ground strength to conquer it. But, I'm going to take it with diplomacy. So, um, the diplomatic conquest of that world, let me take a look at it here, is 12, um, 12, no, 6, or sorry, 4. Sorry, yeah, it is 12, 12 energy. 8, and four, 12, 8, or 4. Okay, so I'm going to go, I have to choose two of those things. So I'm going to do 12 energy. Um, and then... I'm going to do the four prestige, but I have a new card called Cult of the Divine Emperor. It's a tactic I gained. Your cost to conquer a world through diplomacy with your leader, and that is my leader, 
is minus two prestige. So I only have to pay two prestige. Make some change. And I have gone there and won your people over with my beautiful, beautiful smile. So this gets discarded. I don't lose any of my units. I just lose all this stuff, all this, these resources. But I get to keep all his units. And so that event is now over. And later we'll move this over. But this comes off. And this comes in. Uh, okay. Now it's your turn. So you now have a much higher force than Albrecht does because I lost one of his ships. What is your total? A billion? <laughs> you, have, you have a lot. Uh, let's see. Three, six. I have only an eight total now because I sent that thing over to Banner. Nine. Fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen, eh? Get it pretty close to that. Not quite where I need it. You know what? I'm going to roll the die and see if I get lucky. All right. Because I can take it if this is a lucky roll. Well, if I don't... All right, okay. <laughs> but of course... Okay, so you do have to damage something. Okay. So you have to just flip one of your units over. What do these guys do? You want to do, obviously, the littlest one you've got. Not necessarily. Okay. Um, well, actually, hold on. It's the wording. Okay, what does it say? I, you know what? I, I will I will flip over the little one, simply because... Okay, so there's a starfighter that's it, it, been damaged. It's the cyborg unit. I can retain it instead of uh, discarding it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so... So I've damaged this starfighter, so you lost a little bit of strength. One. Yep. So you're up. Are you going to do something? You're still ahead. Um, now, I have a question. This has a mobilization cost. Um, but uh, do I have to pay that for each unit that matches? In other words, this, this is... Uh, this each unit that you, want to do, that you want to mobilize, you have to pay for. Okay. So I will mobilize the cyborg units at long last. Make an appearance. Right. One, two. Yeah, I only have two of them there. So I will, I will pay two. Two materials. So let's show how that works. So he's, he is going to upgrade two of his robots into cyborg units. So we'll take a look at the camera here. And so each of these robots, which is already very strong and has a one fleet strength and a two ground strength, has now gained yet another ground strength and allows you to retain one damaged or destroyed unit instead of discarding it. So um, so he won't even lose that starfighter. So he has got this place down. So I, I, sir, I pass. You can still keep playing if you want to like blow me up or something, but I pass. Um, You're definitely ahead. I'm just going to mobilize this one for free. Um... Okay, the Nexus Explorer. So you could spend two materials. So he's going to mobilize a cruiser to become the Nexus Explorer, which adds even more strength to him. But more importantly, he could spend two material to take any one of these that he'd like in the Galactic Order chart. So I'm going to do that. And... Okay, so that gets you a material. Right, so essentially paid one to go up one. All right, so you discard a robot and a cruiser. Now, the cards don't get lost. The cards just get discarded so that he can bring them out again. So that card gets discarded. His ship is going to get repaired so he doesn't lose it, even though it was damaged. He gains this card. We are on the final round, round nine. I guess I'm ready then. We'll burn these two cards off the top here and seed this last one. These other two uh, will just be lost unless someone does an event action. So this goes here. Okay. And then we flip this one over, so it's another score. And this is strategist. Every empire scores empire points equal to the total number of tactic cards 
it possesses. So I have one, two, three, four. So I gained four points from that. What do you got from it? I'm counting. I think this one was seeded by the game. <laughs> like, I don't remember putting this one in. I have five. All right, so you get five. We'll shuffle these. Okay, so we finished the event phase. Um, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to send uh, Dagda Ambassador number three to Dagda, to my uh, core world. Um, basically moving from his little home office out to that part of the zone. And uh, he is going to do an event action plus three. So I'm going to spend an Empire point. And there are only two left, so I get to look at them both. And pick one. Okay. So I'll seed that one here. Okay, and this should have been right here. So we'll pop that down, and then we'll score this, which is Commander. And this is a mistake I made. I had planned to go here and get more of these tokens. Because this says every empire scores empire points equal to its total number of unit tokens divided by two. I should have gone here first. That's my mistake. So I have one, two, three. I get four points for that. And I've got them because I had put them in already. So. Okay, I'll take two. All right, had you taken those out? Okay. All right, so this goes here. And that's my first action, so you're up. All right, I am going to go to here. And I'm going to go back one okay. on Mystic Brotherhood. And just trigger that last one. And I'm going to... So that goes down again. And then we flip this. And the new one is Warlord. Every Empire scores Empire points equal to the total number of unit cards it possesses. So I have one, two... Just two, and I'd already put them in. So I have three. Okay. So I have three. Okay. All right. Um, so that's that guy. So now I'm up with my second person, uh, and I'm going to go to Pata, and I am going to spend a prestige point to get a cruiser and a star fighter. It's me. I'm going to go here. And spend a robot. I'm going to spend a robot. And you get six materials. Okay, I am going to um I am going to send Albrecht to Idun with a bunch of stuff. One, two, three. I think I'll leave one behind. How many unit tokens do you have left in that stack there? Three. So he'll bring six. It's going to cost me three energy, which is almost all my energy. Get two left. Then I will spend a Merchant Alliance and one of my last energy to activate Idun and gain a prestige and an empire point. Uh, my total there, if you're interested, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to go there and spend four energy to get a prestige and an, empire. and an empire point. I'm going to go to Argos 1 and get two materials. Put that in and remove three. You're up. I'm going to send Prince Godwin. Oh boy, we're going to have a fight after all. Maybe. Um, you got to end with a final battle, Norm. You don't have to. <laughs> Albrecht has retreated twice, but he's been clever in doing so. In each, each circumstance, it's been to his benefit to... Okay, and uh, I am going to spend the battle cruiser for 
And I do have to pay an, a prestige, but I, I get it back. Yes. And you lost your battle cruiser. Yep. Okay. And did you spend an energy to move those? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you only had to spend one, one energy. Yeah. So what is your total strength there? Oh, not much. I, I was a just activating. Uh, so I've got, uh, what, three, six. He's up to no good. All right, well, I'm curious enough. And I figured you, you at least want to have a bunch of guys there. Uh, I'm going to at least move Lord Banner there. Now, I can only have one guy actually be the commander of my forces, so Lord Banner won't add his strength to Albrecht's. Only one of your heroes can actually fight in the battle, mm -hmm. but I am going to move him there and use his power to transport this, this cruiser I picked up and add it to the stack here. So, because his power, once again, is after he moves, move one of your infantry starfighters, cruises, or vehicles to his current world for free. So I've got quite the force there. And I've got cards just like you do. Yep. And at this point, I think I'm just going to go to Sinbad to move up in the Mergers Alliance and get, and a, prestige. get a prestige. All right, let's duke it out. What do you have there? I'm not fighting. Oh, I had so many fun <laughs> cards to play. I could have gotten really I, high. I I used all my guys, Seven, and I, nine, I was... 10, 11. I had 14, and I'm not going to use... I have my war room, which would give me 16. I have, which I haven't used yet the whole game, once I didn't have enough to mobilize him. I'll tell you this card, Ada. What's this? This is the Mech Annihilator. Oh, my God. It gives plus 5 to my vehicle. <laughs> And makes him discard damage one unit of his choice. But it costs two energy and two materials to mobilize. And it's unique, so I can only do one. And one of the battles, I forgot to get the energy. So you couldn't use it? I couldn't mobilize it. So that's one of the battles that you defeated me in. Um, so, yeah. So I was thinking about doing this, but the, I, I, there was... I don't have to fight. I just wanted to... You don't to have to. I could still I just attack I'd, you. I'd, I'd bring the guys along. I, I could, could have attack left you here. for fun. However, we already know that... The one that rewards you for having unit tokens is, is gone, gone. So right? There's so. no reason to fight. So uh, now I have to have a four and a four. So um, I have two in space already. That's another two, and I'll get rid of this vehicle uh, and this uh, infantry. So I spend a cruiser, a vehicle, and an infantry plus my own stats. And I conquer Idun. I don't have his card that gives me bonus energy. Because I left that here. And so that world is mine. Okay. So that was a, a whole bunch of guys hanging out at Idun. Okay. So now that's the end of that. So now um, the end phase doesn't matter. So just for simplicity's sake, though, we should bring all of our ambassadors home. So we have everything together as we're doing the final scoring. Because... Um, this final card that was revealed, by the way, is called the Champion of Ra. It's always at the bottom. The Throne World of Ra awaits each event action now triggers one present event. What that means is if we had continued to do event actions in order to trigger more of them, um, instead of seeding an event, we would have just triggered the next present event. So let's pull these all back. And then we'll do... So we score all the events that were seeded. If there were still events here... Um, that were not seeded, then we would not do that. So we have these last three events to go before we determine the final winner. So the first one that we're going to score is, this is one that I knew about, uh, but I was not, no, this is one that you must have seeded. Uh, every empire scores empire points equal to its highest rating on the galactic order chart. For me, that's three. Looks like for you, it's four. Five. five. Oh, sweet. So you get five, I get three. Okay, and I'm going to cash some of these in because I'm running out of little ones here. Eight. Good. Okay, now we're going to do these last two. All right. This one is Exploiter. Every empire scores empire points equal to the value of its remaining materials divided by two. So round up. So I had five, six, seven, so I end up getting four for that one. I have twelve. So I get six. Yep, you got the maximum. That each was the one I each of these cap, Each of these cap out at six. We don't want someone to win the game for one card. 
Okay, and finally, this is the one that I, I seeded. Every empire scores empire points equal to the number of galactic orders with which it has a rating of one or more. So I have one, two, three, four. I have six for that one. I have three, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so we've scored all of the remaining events. There were obviously a lot of events that didn't score, like this one scored and this one. There was one that was total number of worlds and next. I was hoping for the... Uh... For the events. Yeah, we both would have done well with that one. And I had I had more worlds conquered than Norm, so I was hoping for that one. We got the Exploiter. Um, the Magnate didn't come out for Prestige, which is good because I ran out of those. Um, and Visionary would have would have helped you. Uh, I only had one hero. But I, I had... No, this was for the advancements. Oh. And we each had one hero. So. I, I had one advancement. All right, so now the last thing that we do is we just total up the points that we have. Now that we've... We, we total up the points in our resource bank and then the ones that are on all of our worlds, including the ones we started with. All right, I've got 37 empire points. Okay, so you have 37 in your bank. Um, I have a little bit less than that. I have 10, 25, 34. So you're three ahead of me before we do worlds. Okay, and I have 18 in the worlds. 10... I have 24 in worlds. Ooh. So my total, I think, is 58. Let me just keep Mine's 55. 10, 25, 34, 35, 6, 37, 44, uh, 45, 46, 47, 3, 49, 58 to 55. 55. So very, very close game. We had two very different strategies. I think we struggled a lot in the beginning for resources because the, the resource... Cause these guys came up. Right, there's a lot of ones that just give resources that did not come up, uh, and um, I think we had to use these a little bit more than we normally do. I know I was suffering in the beginning because you would not visit my worlds, which made me very sad, and I had no <laughs> empire points, so that was really tough. Meanwhile, I was kind of giving you a lot of empire points early on, which I think helped you a bit in the beginning, but towards the end, conquering the worlds helped, and I think the... My little maneuver taking... So you took over a world that was from the luxury worlds. I took over worlds from luxury worlds, but you lost the points from the one that I took from you. Right. So I think in the end, since I won by three points, that, that was final maneuver it. was the thing that put me over. Um, but it was very, very close in spite of all that, only three-point difference. So I will ascend the throne of Ra with great pride and pomp, and you may be invited. Ada, yeah. you may also be invited. Well, thank you so much. All right, thank you, everybody. Yeah.